Uh, growing up in Westport, uh, going to the CBS, actually I started off in our famous school in Kilavangan, where there was 13 pupils. Yeah. And as I left it in... And who was the teacher there? Uh, Mrs Kelly, unfortunately. Uh, she was a neighbour, she lived locally. And thir 13 people, I think. I left for fifth class and came into the Christian Brothers for my sixth. And then I went on to the CBS. Uh, I have to admit, I was quite a bad student. I was in, I hated school. <laughs> I was allergic. I, I, they may not have. Doesn't suit everybody. Uh, it didn't suit me. I didn't. It didn't make any sense. Maybe it's easy to blame the teachers, but I'm sure it came both ways. Mm. I used to hit or hitch off from school and go down to the quay, and people would probably find this a long time ago. But the, uh, the cargo ships used to come into the quay with timber and coal and slag and fertiliser for Malloy's, which is now a super value. And you work there for three days, you would get some serious money into your hand, 30, 40 pounds for the three days. And did you work there, did you? I worked three days there. We, we'd see the ships coming in from our house. Uh, we'd know by the lights on the ships. Okay. And we'd get on the bike at seven o'clock in the morning and be first there. With the big ships? They'd be... Oh yeah, they'd be, well they were big enough to come into Westport, but mm. they had to come in on high tide and obviously go out in low tide, because mm. Westport, uh, it's, it's, it dries. You know, it was hard work, you were going from 8 o'clock to 8 o'clock, and then if the tide was high at 8, at 12, rather than come back the next day, you might work till 10 o'clock that night to get the boat out. Mm. So the, obviously the quicker the boat got out, the more money. Uh, and who worked with you on that job? Well, a lot of people were in the Canvey. Um, and then I worked in Belfair House with John Healy, as I said earlier, and it was interesting. I had no interest in school, mm. absolutely zero, and it wasn't picked up, but I decided I'd go anyway and spent my mornings copying, copying the exercises. And then I got interested in music from when John Healy opened up the ballroom. I used to work in the cloakroom at night time for 10 shillings. That was in the Castle Road? No, no, that was in, 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 in Belfair, Belfair, in Belfair yeah. before he opened the Starlight. Mm. And uh, I just got interested in music and then the school definitely went out the door. And then I worked in the hotel, in the kitchen, in the bar. And I, it was a really weird business because no two days were ever the same. Oh, yeah. It was always different. And, and what age were you then about? Oh God, I wasn't that old, about 12, 14. Okay, that stays, eh? that young. That young, yeah, mm -hmm. but it was good money. It was 10 shillings, it was a lot of money. You were a hustler, I think. Not really, <laughs> just there at the right place, the right Make time. a living. <laughs> uh, the, the, the Starlight was open then, and that was the first revolving stage, I think, in the British Isles, and Roy Orbison opened it. Were you there? I was, I was actually working at it. Big crowd? Three and a half thousand, I think. Oh and no, not a drink in sight. Not a drink in sight. <laughs> which is kind of weird, people say, how can they do that? And then I just decided to get interested in cooking for some reason, which, growing up in Westbridge, <coughs> the idea of being a chef was a guy in a wimpy hat. And actually there was a wimpy on the Castle Bar Road, it was probably the only fast one. It's still there, under a different name. Mm. O'Connell's had it. O'Connell's had it for a long time, and then they sold on. Uh, the, the fact that I was going off to train as a chef I would say caused a lot of laughs because you, did, you didn't train to be a cook, you didn't train to cook then. But uh, I just liked it and I was very fortunate. My mum, uh, God rest her, she, uh, she must have pulled some serious strings to get me there. Uh, but I got, you to go very, I got into a very good school in Nathan Rye, St Nathan Mary's Rye. Catering College. And I have to say I didn't like it. But I would have hate if I had, I would hate not to have gone. You persevered. I persevered. Mm -hmm. Well, I was interested in it. Maybe that's why I wasn't interested in school. Well, yeah. And I passed the exams there, and they actually made you feel good. Maybe they needed to change their teaching methods. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do a bit of fishing? Well, we fished both with rod and uh, with nets, uh, licensed nets, licensed nets. Vincent Burke and the family had it just across from our house, mm. and. People probably wouldn't believe this now, but... That was on the Belfair River, yeah? Ah, uh, at the mouth of the Belfair River, going into a place called Pulgarov. Yeah. And the Ruddies, 
used to fish at the point of Alloc. We did it at different dates. They fished at low tide, we fished at high tide. With nets? With nets, yeah, legal. Legal, yeah, yeah. And people wouldn't believe it, but on an average tide, we say there's two tides every 24 hours, we would pull maybe 150, 200 salmon a day. A day. A day. A day. Now they'd be looking to do that in two years. Uh, it was good. And the biggest haul we got was out in shift and it was 127 salmon. And people stopped on the road to take pictures of all the salmon being laid out. It was, I remember that. I was quite young, but I remember it. It was phenomenal. You know? Yeah, a lot of fish. And fish was everywhere. You could put your hand down into the river and pick up a trout. I mean, sea trout, and they are actually one of the nicest fishes you can eat. But you just look down, they were just all over the place. If you put your hand down, you just pick them up. And could you catch one by hand? You could. Oh, you could. Yeah. Just leave your hand in it. And just you were quick. If you wanted to be very quick, though. What well, was the biggest salmon you ever saw down there? The biggest salmon was 27 pounds, or 17 pounds. The big fish. It was, uh, I think it was the biggest caught there. I, mean, I, I could stand corrected on that, but I just remember it was... It was uh, and were there remember. many line fishermen there? Many uh, oh, there was. There was uh, Father O'Malley, I think. Uh, Toby's. The plumber, what was his name? Mm -hmm. Down in Bethlehem River. Gibbons. Uh, Gibbons. Gibbons, yeah. They would all, we, we had all our own spots down there, below the Belclare Bridge, between the bridge and the sea. Well, Norman Hewitt would be there. Didn't Norman would be there. Norman was, the, he was a good fly man. He would be the other side of the river. He would do a lot of fly fishing all the way up to the bridge in Napa. Paddy Kelly? Yeah. yeah there, was, there was actually a lot more, they were, they were very organised. They all had their own spots. Okay. And they'd all help each other if somebody got caught. And... It was, I've seen some serious, Jack Stack was another man, he was a great fisherman there. Was there much poaching going on there? Off the record, a lot. Well, put it on the record. There <laughs> uh, <laughs> was, yeah. But and how would they do it? It didn't really, people said the poaching is the reason there's no fish in the river. That's nonsense. Mm. It was the drift netting that killed them. And how did they do it? How used to poach? Nits or? Well, I'm sure everybody, you just drag the river. You, Two guys one side, two guys the other side, and just go maybe 100 yards and you'd pick up 20, 30 fish. With the nets, like one each side? Yeah. And you could have night lines. You'd put on four or five night lines. Or, you know, it was easy. There was so many fish there. It was, uh, and you snatched it. You snatching thing. Well, yeah. You didn't need to. People didn't, didn't like that. Didn't like it, if you yeah. did snatching, you were cheating. Yeah. And were the bailiffs be down there much? I can't remember. I never heard of a bailiff like that <laughs> this time. I the, think. Uh, it was easy then, was it? It was easy. I'm sure they were there, but I can't. I'm just trying to think. I can't remember. Mm. But now it's all different. But there was a lot of fish there. In it now. Are there many fish in the river now, Robbie? There wouldn't obviously be as many as from then, but the, they're coming back. There's no poaching now, really. Maybe mm. there's the odd one, but and there's definitely no net fishing. So if they gave us another five years, I seen a few last year going up, but uh, it, it was just a pity. It was the drift nets mm. that off, off Iceland on the North Sea. Because we often caught them in the in our nets, you can see the mark around their neck. Okay, right. Sir. But uh, there's a few in it. I, I, just, I would love to see it coming back because, I mean, people don't believe that you know you, you just look over the bridge in Belclare and you can see fish. 